Hi, my name is Rick. <clears throat> I'm a compulsive overeater. I wanted to go over all the references in the book Alcoholics Anonymous. Al Alcoholics Anonymous, where it says you must. All the musts. Our book is meant to be suggestive only. We realize we know only a little. God will constantly, dis constantly disclose more to you and to us. Ask him in your morning meditation what you can do each day for the man who is still sick. The answers will come if your own house is in order. But obviously you cannot transmit something you haven't got. See to it that your relationship with him is right, and great events will come to pass for you and countless others. This is the great fact for us. That's from the book Alcoholics Anonymous, page 164. While the program is considered a suggested method for dealing with the disease of alcoholism, there are places within the big book where their authors use the word must. The following is a list of 40 musts from the big book. He suddenly realized that in order to save himself, he must carry his message to another alcoholic. In this statement, he confirms what we who have suffered alcoholic tor torture must believe, that the body of the alcoholic is quite as abnormal as his mind. The message which can interest and hold these alcoholic people must have depth and weight. In nearly all cases, their ideas must be grounded in a power greater than themselves if they are to recreate their lives. Simple, but not easy. A price had to be pay, paid. It meant destruction of self-centeredness. I must turn in all things to the Father of Light who presides over us all. If we are planning to stop drinking, there must be no reservation of any kind nor any lurking notion that someday we will be immune to alcohol. Once more, the alcoholic at certain times has no effective mental defense against the first drink. Except in a few cases, neither he nor any other human being can provide such a defense. His defense must come from a higher power. But after a while, he had to face the fact that we must find a spiritual basis of life or else. They arise out of ourselves, and the alcoholic is an extreme example of self-will run riot, though he usually doesn't think so. Above everything else, we alcoholics must be rid of this selfishness. We must, or it will kill us. God makes that possible. We begin to see that the world and its people have really dominated us. In that state, the wrongdoing of others, fancied or real, had power to actually kill. How could we escape? We saw that these resentments must be mastered, but how? We could not wish them away any more than alcohol. Whatever our, our ideal turns out to be, we must, we must be willing to grow toward it. We must be willing to make amends where we have done harm, provided that we do not bring about still more harm in so doing. In other words, we treat sex as we would any other problem. In meditation, we ask God what we should do about each specific matter. The right answer will come if we want it. We must be entirely honest with somebody if we expect to live long or happily in this world. Rightly and naturally, we think well before we choose the person or persons with whom to take this intimate
confidential step. Those of us belonging to a religious denomination which requires confession must and of course will want to go to the proper appointed authority whose duty, duty it is to receive it. The rule is we must be hard on ourselves but always considerate of others. We say this because we are very, very anxious that we talk to the right person. It is important that he be able to keep a confidence, that he fully understand and approve of what we are driving at, that he may not, that he, excuse me, that he will not try to change our plan. But we must not use this as a mere excuse to postpone. Our drinking has made us slow to pay. We must lose our fear of creditors no matter how far we have to go, <clears throat> for we are liable to drink if we are afraid to face them. Although these reparations take innumerable forms, there are some general principles which we find guiding. Reminding ourselves that we have decided to go to any length to find a spiritual experience. We ask that we be given strength and direction to do the right thing, no matter what the personal consequences may be. We may lose our position or reputation or face jail, but we are willing. We have to be. We must not shrink at anything. Before taking drastic action, which might implicate other people, we secure their consent. If we have obtained permission, have consulted with others, ask God to help, and the drastic step is indicated, we must not shrink. Sometimes we hear, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> sometimes we hear an alcoholic say, the only thing he needs to do is keep sober. Certainly he must keep sober, for there will be no home if he doesn't. But he is yet a long way from making good to the wife or parents whom for years he has so shockingly treated. Yes, there is a long period of reconciliation ahead. We must take the lead. A remorseful mumbling that we're sorry won't fill the bill at all. <clears throat> we ought to sit down with the family and frankly analyze the past as we see it, being careful not to criticize them. Their de defects may be glaring, but the chances that our own actions are partly responsible. So we clean house with the family, asking each morning in meditation that our Creator show us the way of patience, toler tolerance, kindness, and love. A spiritual life is not a theory. We have to live it. Unless one's family ex expresses a desire to live upon spiritual principles, we think we ought not to urge them. We should not talk incessantly to them about spiritual matters. They will change in time. Our behavior will convince them more than our words. We must remember that 10 or 20 years of drunkenness would make a skeptic, skeptic out of anyone. It is easy to let up on the spiritual program of action and rest on our laurels. We are headed for trouble if we do, for alcohol is a subtle foe. We are not cured of alco alcoholism. What we really have is a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of our spiritual condition. Every day is a day when we must carry the vision of God's will into all our activities. How can I best serve thee? Thy will not mine, be done. These are thoughts which, much, which must go with us constantly. 
we can exercise our willpower along the lines all we wish. It is the proper use of the will. Much has already been said about receiving strength, inspiration, and direction from him who has all knowledge and power. If we have carefully followed directions, we have begun to sense the flow of his spirit into us. To some extent, we have become God conscious. We have begun to develop this vital sixth sense, but we must go far farther, and that means more action. When we retire at night, we constructively review our day. Were, were we resentful, selfish, dishonest, or afraid? Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? What could we, what could we have done better? Were we thinking of, our, of ourselves most of the time? Or were we thinking of what we could do for others? Of what we could pack into the stream of life? But we must be careful not to drift into worry, remorse, or morbid reflection. reflection for that would diminish our usefulness to others. After making our review, we ask God's forgiveness and inquire what corrective measures should be taken. Life will take on new meaning. To watch people recover, to see them help others, to watch loneliness vanish, to see a fellowship grow out about you, to have a host of friends, this is an experience you must not miss. We know you'll not want to miss it. Frequent contact with newcomers and with each other is the bright spot of our lives. To be vital, faith must be accompanied by self-sacrifice and unselfishness, constructive action. These things will come to pass naturally, in good time, provided, however, the alcoholic continues to demonstrate that he can be sober, considerate, and helpful, regardless of what anyone says or does. Of course, we all fall much below this standard many times, but we, we must try to repair the damage immediately, lest we pay the penalty by a spree. If there is a divorce or separation, there should be no undue haste for the couple to get together. The man should be sure of his recovery. The wife should fully understand his new way of life. If their old relationship is to re be resumed, it must be on a better basis, since the former did not work. This means a new attitude and spirit all around. Both you and the new man must walk day by day in the path of spiritual progress. Wait until repeated stumbling convinces, he must, convinces him he must act. For the more you hurry him, the longer his recovery may be delayed. Though it is infinitely better that we have no relapse at all, as has been true of many of our men, it is by no means a bad thing in some cases. Your husband will see at once that he must redouble his spiritual activities if he expects to survive. The head of the house ought to remember that he is mainly to blame for what befell his home. He can scarcely square the account in his lifetime but he must see the danger of over-concentration on financial success. Although financial recovery is on the way for many of us, we found we could not place money first. For us, material well-being always followed spiritual progress. It never proceeded. Since the home has suffered more than anything else, it is well that a man exert himself there. He is not likely to get 
far in any direction if he fails to show unselfishness and love under his own roof. We know there are difficult wives and families, but the man who is getting over alcoholism must remember he did much to make them so. We have come to believe he would like us to keep our heads in the clouds with him, but that our feet ought to be done ought to be firmly planted on earth. That is where our fellow, fellow travelers are, and that is where our work must be done. If your man accepts your offer, it should be pointed out that physical treatment is but a small part of the picture. Although you, you are providing him with the best possible medical attention, he should understand that he must undergo a change of heart. To get over drinking will require a transformation of thought and attitude. We all had to place recovery above everything, for without recovery, we would have lost both home and business. When the man is presented with this volume, it is best that no one tell him he must abide by its suggestion. The man must decide for himself. Long experience with alcohol 